was nine years old, Satish Kumar became a member of the Wandering Brotherhood of Jain Monks. At 18, he left the order to campaign for land reform and then embarked on an 8,000 mile peace pilgrimage, walking from India to America with no money. He moved to England in 1973 to become the editor of Resurgence Magazine, an inspiring collection of articles on ecology, alternative education, spirituality, sustainable development, and the arts. Since then, Satish has played an important role in a number of initiatives, including founding a school that incorporates ecological and spiritual values into its curriculum. He is also a visiting fellow of the Schumacher College. Satish believes that the future well-being of the planet and its occupants will depend on a new worldview in which the earth and the human community are indivisible. Please welcome to Connecting for Change, Satish Kumar. Thank you. Thank you very much for such a wonderful introduction. And I would like to congratulate Marian Institute <clears throat> for organizing such a wonderful BioNears conference. And uh, I would like to also thank them for inviting me to come here and to speak to you. And I would like to thank you all for turning up in such big numbers. So thank you for being here. As you heard that when I was a young man, you know how old I am now? I am still 75 years young. <laughs> but when I was 25, I was sitting in a restaurant drinking coffee and I opened the newspaper and there was a news. A great British philosopher called Bertrand Russell was protesting against the nuclear weapons and the British government arrested him because he was making direct action and put him in jail. And I read this I had heard of Bertrand Russell, and I said to my friend who was with me, I said, look, here is a man of 90 going to jail for peace in the world. What are we doing, young men, sitting here drinking coffee? <laughs> and so, then and there, we talked and talked and decided that let us do something. Let us act. What can we do? In the end, we decided that let's walk to Moscow, Paris, London, and Washington, D.C. Those were the four nuclear capitals at that time. And protest against the nuclear weapons. And we felt very good walking to Moscow, Paris, London, Washington. And then we went to see our guru. You know, in India, we have, we, most people have a guru. Guru is a kind of spiritual friend whom you trust and you take advice. If you are doing anything big, significant, then you take advice of your guru. So we went to our guru, his name was Vinoba Bhave, and he said, 
that I am delighted that you want to go to work for peace, on a peace pilgrimage. But I want to give you a piece of advice. What is your advice? My advice to you is that you go without any money in your pockets. I said, any money? <laughs> Not even for a cup of tea? Or a telephone call? He said, no. Why? I asked. He said, you are going for peace. Peace comes from trust. And wars come from fear. So if you are walking for peace, you have to have a trust in your heart, trust in people, trust in the universe. How do you demonstrate that you really trust? When you have no money, means you trust. And when you have money, you buy everything, you buy your food, you go to a B&B or guest house to sleep, you meet nobody or very few. But when, when you have no money, you are forced to find someone to give you hospitality. And then you talk about peace. So now we had to take his advice. Because the relationship between a guru and the disciple is not a dilettante relationship. <laughs> it's not when it suits you, you take it. If it doesn't suit you, you don't take it. But we had a little worry. However, we left India. We left the grave of Mahatma Gandhi in New Delhi. We walked through India. In India, it was not so difficult to walk without money because people knew us and there was a newspaper stories and everybody knew. But when we came to the border of India and Pakistan, that was a testing moment. One of my friends, very close friend, he came and said, Satish, aren't you totally crazy? <laughs> you are going to Pakistan? which is our enemy country. We had three wars between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. And you are going there without money, without food and walking. At least you should take some food with you. And he brought some packets of food. And I looked at these packets of food. And I thought for a minute and remembered my guru, Vinoba. And I said to this friend that you are very kind, very thoughtful that you come with food, but these packets of food are not packets of food, they are packets of mistrust. What am I going to say to my Pakistani host that I did not know whether you will feed me or not? So I have brought my own food all the way from India. He was in tears, my friend. He gave me a big hug. I said, my friend, why are you crying? Give me your blessing, smile. He said, Satish, I don't know if I will ever see you again. You are going to Muslim countries, Christian countries, capitalist countries, communist countries, deserts, mountains, forests, without money, without food, walking. I don't know if you will return alive. I said to my friend that don't worry. Fear is not the right thing for a peace pilgrim. If I die while walking for peace, that is the best kind of death that I can have. And if I don't get food sometimes, I will say, that is my opportunity to fast. And if I don't get shelter to sleep sometimes, if people don't give me shelter to sleep, I will sleep under the stars. And I will say, this is Million Star Hotel. Who 
cares for the five star hotel when you can sleep under the million star hotel so my friend smiled and gave me blessing and then i walked through pakistan and everywhere hospitality wonderful you have to read my book to get the whole story it's called no destination but one story i want to tell you as i was walking over the khyber pass which is a very high pass something like 3000 meters or something like that very high pass and the road goes like this meandering and i had a stick and a like rucksack and my friend with both of us walking and walking up and up and up and then a car came by and it went past us it it had to go slowly because it was a very high going and meandering lots of bends but the car stopped after about 50 yards ahead of us and reversed and the man driver said you look very tired do you want a lift i said no thank you we are walking <laughs> he said but aren't you glad i am offering you a lift where are you walking to i heard his accent american accent he was an american he said i said to him as a matter of fact we are walking to the united states of america <laughs> so he was puzzled <laughs> he came out of the car and he stood like this i remember like a picture in front of my eyes he stood like this gentlemen do you know where the united states of america is <laughs> i said sir we have never been there but we believe that it exists <laughs> and if columbus could discover america we are also going to discover america on foot <laughs> so he smiled at us and went on his pocket and brought out his card address card and said gentlemen i don't know if you will make to america but if you do here is my card <laughs> please come and see me let me know i would like to know that you made it so we took the card when you have no money an address is a very important <laughs> and we walked through afghanistan through iran through the soviet union many stories many adventures to moscow through russia poland germany belgium france many adventures and the people in france helped us to cross the channel we came to england we met button russell he was very delighted he was 92 by then it took 2 years to get to get to uh, england and he said but you can't walk over the atlantic can i give you some money and i said mr russell lord russell we have not touched money for 2 years so we cannot take money but if you can help us with two tickets <laughs> not in an aeroplane ticket but a boat ticket because we don't want to go from walking to flying we would like to sail so he said to his secretary yes please arrange two tickets for them and so we got nice two tickets in a wonderful boat in those days called queen mary and we sailed across the atlantic and arrived in new york and we started to walk from new york and this person who had given his car to us lived in philadelphia and so when we came to philadelphia 
We rang Mr. Scarf, Dr. Scarf was his name. He said, Dr. Scarf, do you remember you met two Indians in Khyber Pass? He said, yes, I do. Where are they? He <laughs> said, we are here in your town. He was so amazed. And he came and he met us and he took us to his house. He said, you must stay for two nights with me and I want to, you to meet my friends. And he invited friends and dinner party and so on. And then we walked to Washington, D.C. And we ended our journey at the grave of John F. Kennedy. We started from the grave of Mahatma Gandhi and ended at the grave of Kennedy. To make the point that if you believe in the gun, you not only kill bad people, you also kill a gun, kills a Gandhi. A gun kills a Kennedy. And so that was our journey for peace. But peace is not only world peace. Peace is not only nuclear disarmament. We have to make peace with ourselves. At this moment, people, individuals, are not at peace in themselves. Unless you make peace with yourself, you cannot make peace with the world. And so we have to understand who we are and how we can live a life which has peace within. The inner landscape is as important as the outer landscape. If you have no inner peace, you cannot make outer peace. And so, spiritual peace, recognizing who I am, and putting yourself in the service of the others. At the moment, lots of people think, I am not good enough, I can't do anything. You are potentially a great human being. Every one of you, every one of us, every one of us is a potential Gandhi, a potential Martin Luther King, a potential Mother Teresa, a potential Walt Whitman, a potential Shakespeare. All of us have that potential. There was a great artist historian in India called Ananda Kumara Swami. And he used to say that an artist is not a special kind of person, but every person is a special kind of artist. Every one of us, every one of you, we are all artists. But our artist, our potential being is dormant, suppressed. We are working from morning to evening, five days a week, six days a week, from 8 to a.m. to 6 p.m. in front of computer, just to earn money. We don't have time to develop who we are and find our true potential. Now, great changes come in the world, not because somebody in the White House can bring about change. What a disappointment President Obama has been. <clears throat> he wrote a book called Audacity of Hope. I wonder where that audacity has gone. So, we have to now say that the great changes, great transition, great transformation will not come from the White House or 10 Downing Street or Paris or New Delhi. The true leadership will come from the people. When I came walking to the United States of America, after walking to Washington, D.C., I went to meet Martin Luther King. And at that time, in the South, this racial discrimination was so strong that I was thrown out of a restaurant at a gunpoint. And at that time, black people had no vote. But things have changed. 
Now at least someone like Obama is in the White House and the people have vote. But that change came from the people at the grassroots level. So you, all of you, every one of you, particularly young people here, you are potential great leader. So you have to discover yourself and make peace with yourself. And then we also have to make peace with the soil, with, with nature. At this moment, the humanity lives as if it is the ruler of the world. Human species consider themselves so superior that we can do to nature what we like. We can cut down the rainforest. We can uh, poison the land. We can overfish the oceans. We can put the animals in factory farms in confinement. Humanity has been waging war against nature. And even if we win the war, we will be the losers. And therefore, making peace with the earth, I learned while walking around the world. Earth is our mother. Earth sustains us. Nature is not there only for human use. This utilitarian value, that nature is there only for us to cut down the trees and make our houses and kill the animals to make our meat. Nature has intrinsic value. Tree is good in itself for its own sake. And we are in relationship with the natural world. Humans and nature are one. This is what I learned while walking through nature on the planet Earth. And we have John Francis here, another planet walker. When you walk on the Earth, go in nature, you learn from nature. There's a great deal of difference between learning about nature and learning from nature. When you learn about nature, nature is out there as an object of study. But when you are learning from nature, nature is your mentor. Nature is your teacher. My mother used to say that nature is the greatest teacher, even greater than the Buddha. And I would say to my mother, mother, it can't be true. There's no one greater than the Buddha in India. We say, Buddha was the greatest teacher. So my mother would say, but where did Buddha learn his wisdom? Where did he get his enlightenment? He got his enlightenment while sitting under a tree. <laughs> and nowadays we don't get enlightenment because we don't sit under a tree. So nature is our teacher. This is why I call soil, soul and society. Peace is on three levels. Soil represents the natural world. And we are all nature. The word nature, the Latin meaning is natura, is to be born. When a mother is pregnant, she goes to, how is the time? Zero. I'll give you two minutes. Huh? Okay. When mother goes to checking for her pregnancy, it's a prenatal check or postnatal check. Nat natal, nativity, nature comes from the same root. So we are all nature. So we have to live in harmony with the natural world. And at this moment, particularly in the United States, this is an important message to learn that we are not the rulers of nature, we are not the, not the guardians of nature, we are friends of nature and we have to make peace with nature. So make peace with nature, make peace yourself and then make peace with the world. Then soil, soul and society will be at peace. Thank you very much.